last few days I've been playing with uh, the CUDA framework from NVIDIA, um, specifically for the Mac, for Mac OS, because um, I have a GeForce GTX 560 in my desktop. So uh, I just wanted to, sh I just kind of want to show you what I've been, a uh, couple things I've been doing. So one of my key interests in CUDA was to use it for image processing. So I wrote a simple demo that uh, does a, a box blur and then a Sobel filter on an image to generate like to generate a smooth um, gray edged image. So to start off with, um, that just defines a couple of functions like box filter, Sobel filter, and then these two functions are used because the um, I'm I'm actually I've merged OpenCV and uh, or I'm using OpenCV to do image displaying and uh, image displaying in the camera capture and CUDA do the processing instead of OpenCV's built-in functions. So since we need memory space, the, the fastest memory space so far that I've come across, there might be faster, for reading and writing is um, a memory, is a host mapped memory. So um, you allocate it and the, uh, the device can access the, um, or the, the GPU device can access um, the memory as well as the CPU without having to reallocate re anything. So I, uh, I, all the images that I use, except for the the one directly from the camera, I use create image buffer to uh, create a shared buffer between the GPU and the CPU. So um, in the in the main file, um, just simple like set up um, camera capture, and then set up the buffer images we're going to use that uh, have that are shared between the the graphics card, and then copy some just some test data into them. Uh, we're gonna create four windows: one for source, grayscale, blurred, and the Sobel filter. Um, and then we're gonna we're gonna run through a while loop that um, basically it captures an image, converts it to grayscale into the image buffer for the graphics card. Then we just have the well, well, this. Let me just separate these out so it's a little bit easier to see the difference. But uh, basically, print out the system time in microseconds. Um, afterwards, uh, box filter the image. Uh, for uh, which just is a three by three summation average to um, generate a, a simple filter. I didn't, I haven't written a Gaussian one yet, a Gaussian one yet. Uh, then we run the Silva filter on it, starting in yet another image. We reprint the time so we know how much time it took for the uh, the uh, the filtering to execute, and we show all the images. Um, and I should have destroyed the image buffer. Okay. Um, then let's look at the CUDA code. So as in uh, as in CUDA, um, if you've had any experience, you know that the globals are actually what runs on the GPU. Um, if you look at them, you'll notice it only seems to work on one pixel. However, they're called in parallel. So there there's since I'm only dealing with 0.3 megapixel images from my webcam, I am uh, you, uh, these each one thread is assigned to uh, each individual pixel of the uh, the image, so we end up having um, there, there's multiple blocks to find each with um, a 16 by 16 thread group. So to process the image, the first one does the box filter, the second one does the Sobel calculation. Um, I haven't done it in a method where I can modify the um, the array programmatically. I have to recompile. Then these two functions, they're named the same as the top ones, just without the kernel part and without the global, because this is what the uh, the C code will actually call to get it to start. You'll notice that for the box filter, just uh, basically starts the pointers, gets the device address, um, sets up the inner, and calls the uh, the kernel. These two functions are pretty much the same, except defining box size. Um, in the box filter, you don't define size at all in the Sobel filter. Then at the end of after calling the um, the kernel, it calls thread synchronize to make sure the entire image is done processing before it continues. Um, and then on create image buffer. Is where it would uh, it it, it allocates um, host memory and then CUDA dis and then destroy image buffer is free the host. So um, I will. So here's compiling the um, the program I wrote a make file to handle the compilation. It has to compile the two bits independently. You'll notice that um, the first line is it compiles the GCC it uses LVMG plus plus because we're on a Mac to compile the uh, the main file. It, comp it uses NVCC to compile with the M64 option passed, so it'll actually comp it'll uh, tar it'll put out a 64-bit host code, um, the CUDA file, and then we uh, we do a final linking, pulling all of our libraries that we need into the final executable. 
So, gee. Okay, so, might as well show you it running. And the sun's kind of bright out here today, so you notice kind of some glare. Let me spread these, oops. Yeah, spread these windows out. Uh, sorry for the lag, it's just because of the screen recording. Source, grayscale. Okay, so here you can see the uh, the stages of the processing pipe, the, the processing that it does. It pulls in this raw image. You can see me, hello me. Um, you'll notice, you'll see that it gets converted to grayscale. This is done by OpenCV. However, these, these uh, except for the source, these three final images here are actually um, resident. Their memories resident, um, shared between the, uh, the, the CPU and the GPU. Um, let's see. Yeah. So you get the source image is converted to grayscale. It's done a filter to try to remove some of the background noise. Uh, you can notice that a little bit more blurry, which is the goal. There's not much performance loss actually by increasing the filter. Usually about for every um, uh, increment of two per dimension, because it, it should be a square, but every increment of um, two. So if you add um, an extra two by two, like col an, uh, extra two columns, an extra two rows per time, you actually it's about an, an extra like 0.5 milliseconds per frame processing. So not much performance loss. I mean, unless you're doing thousands upon thousands of frames in a certain amount of time. But since this needs to be real time, it's okay. And then the final stage is running the Sobo filter. The uh, the black splotches are actually the glare from the sun coming through my window, um, as you can see. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So this is what I've been working on. Oh, and final stage is, since this is running in CUDA, it is very, very fast in comparison to running on the CPU. So here's just the timing scrolling out. But um, notice that the, the short jumps Roughly about um, rough, a little bit more than uh, 30 milliseconds, or actually no, I got that wrong. These are in. Hold on, I got that wrong. Yeah, sorry, that that's actually between the next frame. So you'll notice that the the difference is it takes about 4,000 milliseconds to run all the filtering. So after the time where the image is converted to grayscale to the time in which both both the blur and the sobo filter are done, takes uh, all occupies a space of about four milliseconds. That's um, just over 250 frames per second, um, which is fantastic. So lots more room to do more processing to stay within a 30 frames per second real time margin. Um, and you'll notice it's still pretty fast. So these two are between um, processing and then these two were at the end of one frame and the beginning of the next frame um, processing, the end of one frame of processing and the start of the next. So, um, so I've been working on, um, I'm gonna post the code and the make file to the uh, the link section so please enjoy